I am going to call in the session the Monday, August 31st Conway Select Board meeting. Uh, it's being held through Zoom. And uh, the uh, if somebody is, well, people had the option of getting the Zoom address by going to our calendar. I don't know if that's where you got it, Hope, but somehow it seemed to work fine. And, uh, and it's always wonderful when people join us. Um, so uh, first, uh, we have two minutes that we have to approve. Uh, one is from the August 3rd meeting. Did everybody have a chance to look at them? They look fine to me. So I'm going to make a motion that we accept the minutes of August 3rd. I'll second. Yeah. I assume we all now say aye. Yeah. And, uh, and the other one was the minutes from August 17th. So that was uh, the meeting two weeks ago. Yeah, so, so I think there, there the, I think there there was um, somebody misspelled uh, the Ashfield fellow's last name, Ron Kohler. I think it's C O L E R, not not the not the spelling of the bathroom fixture company. But <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so Tom, are you taking note of that because I think Lisa's not here today? Yes, I'm taking minutes. Great. So you're going to update these minutes. Yeah, do we have a second to that uh, motion as amended? Uh, so as amended, yes, we have, a, yeah. Yes. Okay, we do. So we all say aye. Aye. Right. Yes. Uh, so we have three warrant articles today. We have a vendor warrant article, 69, 9.25, 76 cents. We have a payroll warrant, 90,164 with 80 cents and a payroll deduction warrant, Twenty-three thousand one sixty-one fifty. So, did anybody take a peek at those? Yeah, these seem lower than usual. Tom, is it due to vacations or something? I wasn't sure. Well, why. We, we we've had some large ones at the beginning of the fiscal year because we do a lot of one-time payments or semi-annual payments. Um, so, some of those have been rolling their way through. Um, but uh, yeah, um, it's expenses were were down a bit, not not too much. I'm not complaining. Just <laughs> great. <laughs> so do we have? A, I'll make a, a a motion that we accept the warrants. Second. You will yeah. Vote in favor. Aye. Great. Aye. Yes. So minutes attended by select board members. There actually were a bunch of things. And so usually we do this with the newest member first. So what do you think, Erica? Uh, so I attended the uh, Town of Deerfield Select Board meeting um, where we discussed the uh, incentive for, um, how do I put the, the forestry um, plan, basically. And we were all in favor of that. And so were they. It was great. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that when Phil talks about this, uh, uh, which maybe that's next, he will maybe say a few words uh, because most of them had to do with the carbon credit grant and you and they had some new information. So you Okay, you're done, Eric. I assume so. Anyway, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, I mean, Phil. Yeah, I, I really, that was really more like a learning experience for me. Like Phil had done the, had done the homework and all the, the legwork. So yeah, and set up the meeting and everything. So, um, yeah. So, so I guess it's my turn. Um, yeah. So, so I'll start off by noting that the day after the last select board meeting was the another frontier school committee meeting and the day after that was union 38 where we once again voted on the school opening plans and i am pleased to report that um that there was alterations to those plans that met with enough of a buy-in from the unions um that they are going to that there are there are now enough vo staff voluntarily reporting to um the, accomplish the goals of the administration and the staff and everything else. And, um, and it's, you know, it's, it's the, the, the opening, the school opening was delayed until I believe September 24th. Mm. Um, uh, 
and the, 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 the pods or the cohorts that they are separating the groups into are more numerous and smaller. Um, so that uh, ma maximum number of students in the frontier building is gonna be something like 75 to 80 on a given day. Um, so that, and that's, that's what you call social distancing if you ask mm. me um, as, as well as can be done. So that's, uh, you know, and, and similar, similar the, the, at the Conway Grammar School, there will be um, the same cohort of teachers will be doing the, uh, the online app teaching aspect of it. And the same cohort of teachers will be doing the in-classroom teaching aspect of it. So, um, you know, I guess that went well. And then there we had the, uh, the Deerfield Select Board joint meeting, um, or whatever. it wasn't really a joint meeting, it was us dialing into the Deerfield meeting, I, I suppose. But um, we did talk to them about the, the grant that we filled out for the feasibility study for Conway to participate in the carbon credit market place um, and we contacted Deerfield because one of the re in order for contact uh, for Conway to uh, participate in the marketplace what we have received preliminary indications that they are looking for a 1500 acre contribution minimum um, and seeing as the town forests add up to what one tenth of that um, and seeing as Deerfield at least the water district owns 980 acres of forest land in Conway. It seemed like that was a real good place to start um, in, 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 in talking them about the need to, to uh, about our desire for them to participate in this. And um, it, it's made more possible by the fact that they have engaged the services of the same forester, the Mary Wigmore company, um, to, to do their forest pl uh, plan. So we had a good conversation about that. Um, and, uh, we'll, you know, we'll see where that goes. But the next place is for uh, me to call into the Deerfield Water, the, the Water Department com uh, Commission and, and talk to them directly. But the result of the meeting with the select board was the select board approves of it and they're writing a letter of support for it. Um, and then we also spoke a little bit about the river river access issues, et cetera, uh, with, with that select board as well. And then after that meeting on the same night, we had a lengthy meeting um, with Mary Wigmore and Alex and it was about 15 residents to discuss the current forest management plan that was, uh, that she put together pursuant to the current um, Massachusetts Trails Woodland Partnership grant that we got and that she is, the providing services under. So, um, and I thought that was a really interesting discussion and really interesting points of view. And uh, I don't know, that, that's, that's a pretty good meeting report, isn't it? Excellent. Sorry. <laughs> it was, you know, it was a busier week than usual. So I also went to this, was at the Select Board Deerfield meeting and, and was, you know, really glad that that they were so supportive. They also, they recommended we talk to Waitley. I, I believe that Waitley also has a, a, a lot of land in their, in a water district and they would um, maybe like a lot more than Deerfield. So yes. Uh, anyway, um, it, it sounded all very positive. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, and, the, and, and then the forest review afterwards, you, you know, for people who might be watching this later or for you hope, um, the, you know, they, they presented their plan and then they, we voted on the people who were there all took a vote on which parts of the plan they would support and which parts of the plan they wouldn't support. And with the ones that didn't get a lot of support or less than 50% support, we had some long discussions of how they might change those so that they could be part of the plan because they felt they were important, but not, not, with the same emphasis or under the same rules that they had written them. And, and you know, I, I just have to give um, Mary and Alex a lot of credit for the extent that they are looking for our input. And I don't mean our select board input, you know, Conway's input on, uh, on how a good plan should work. And uh, 
and, and one of the things I was going to say in the announcements, but I'll mention it now because we're talking about it, is they're about to release the modifications to the plan, including all the changes that we talked about at that Zoom meeting. And it, it's either going to be out, I thought it would be out today. It may be out tomorrow. Mary is going to send me the link and we'll get it up into the Conway website for anyone who wants to look through the current version of the plan. And there still is time for you to send in your comments to that level of the plan. It's not cast in stone quite yet, but it's going to be soon. Uh, we had a conservation commission meeting too this week, but it's all relatively, you know, not interesting compared with all the other things. So um, public comments. Oh, any public comments? No, thanks. Uh, so we have no old business in the agenda. We have two items of new business. So the first one, um, I'm going to explain something that I hope uh, you will consider trivial, but it's, un but it's unfortunate in its timing. And that is that not too long after we finalized our electricity aggregation agreement with Dynagy, and this is all of the 13 towns, including Conway, uh, the state has made a small change to their clean energy policy that's going to cause all of the utilities, which include aggregations as well as National Grid and Eversource, to have to raise their prices very slightly. And, and so they're not going to be raised during the current contract period, which, you know, started and will end on December 31st for all the people who joined. But starting on January 1st, both Eversource and Conway will add about a tenth of a penny per kilowatt hour to their electricity prices. And that will be about 50 to 60 cents a month on your electric bill for the average electric customer. The average electric customer is 500 to 600 kilowatt hours a month. And so a tenth of a penny is about 50 cents. So I think a lot of people may not even notice a 50% and their bill probably goes up and down by five or $10 a month, depending upon whether you ran fans or, or uh, dehumidifiers or or whatever at your home. And, uh, and so the, you, our bills change much more than 50 cents a month, but, but it is unfortunate that right after we have had everyone in Conway sign up for the aggregation plan with the commitment that we have a three-year three -year price, which we do, and a very good price, um, it's, it, it is going up, along with Eversource's price going up. So it's, um, I, it's, it's, there's nothing we can do about it. And so what we need to vote on is that, that Dynagy needs us to sign um, an amendment to the pricing agreement that all of the, we all, the towns have with them. And I'm the representative to the aggregation. So I'm expected to sign that we agree to this amendment to the pricing agreement. Now, I think Tom sent that to you. Uh, um, I would say you have it in your packet, but we don't have packets anymore. But about, about a half an hour ago. About a half an hour ago. That's right. Yeah. Um, and and you know, and, and it's about a six-page thing. And um, I don't know if you found it terribly readable or unreadable, but. Uh, the prices well, the, will go up about a tenth of a cent. Yeah, and, the, go ahead. the numbers the numbers were were sort of not in context to what it is currently or or anything else. So, it, and, and the agreement didn't specify that that was just a tenth of a cent. So I to, knew you were going to ask about that, Phil. So, so, the, but, but so, so right now the current price is about ten point one cents per kilowatt hour, starting in January first for our standard plan. And so it'll be 10.1 cents and it's going up to about 10.2 cents. So it's going up by a tenth of a cent from about 10 point, it's actually 10.19. It's going up to 10.29 with the new price. All right. 
So and I didn't have the 10.1 on the top of my head either. So, so the other thing I think I, I thought of was, you know, hey, if the new state law would have caused Eversource and everybody else to drop their prices by a tenth of a cent, would we still be going through this process or does that only uh, apply if the price goes up? That's a good question. I don't know that. Uh, not, I don't know it for Eversource or for the aggregation. Um, I assume that we would change it, um, that the prices the prices are subject to change when state law changes. And there may be other state law changes that occur between now and three years from now, which is how long our contract price is for. But, but so I, I still think 10.29 is a really great price starting in January. And Eversource is going to raise their rates starting in January. We don't know yet what it's going to be, but I'm sure it will be higher than 10.29. And, and, uh, but I can't tell the future, so. All right, so, so the, and then the other thing that I was thinking, you know, that I saw in the agreement, it really spells out the, the, the statutory framework for the, the mixture of renewables, et cetera, et cetera. And so, and, and then I, I also noticed that this was just a day after we got a copy of the signed consent agreement between Eversource and the state for their work on uh, above Bardwell's Ferry, where Eversource, you know, where, where, where it's Eversource is sort of agreeing that for years they hadn't followed their own po corporate policies and, and they really didn't suffer financially for, 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 for any of that. And so, when I, and, and so my thought is, you know, what guarantee, how do we know that they're doing what they say that they're going to do? And what are the remedies that we might have to, if, if they don't do what they say they're going to do in terms of providing that mixture? There are a lot of um, there are a lot of eyes on 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 electricity. You, you know, you know, I mean, it's a very regulated commodity. The Department of Utility watches it like a hawk. Um, I, I don't know whether they're watching their treatment of land when they're doing work, you know, here in town, but they are watching what the electricity mixes are. So uh, I, I I'm not too worried about that. All right. Yeah. I mean, Maura Healy watches it if no one else. Uh, but they, they can't gain the system by just providing, uh, you know, uh, energy from coal-fired plants and saying that it's from windmills. Uh, uh, no, and, and neither okay. can we. So. But, okay. I mean, this is just an amendment to the contract that we've already negotiated, correct? <clears throat> That's right. So uh, if, if we don't agree to this, then the alternative is to like have to renegotiate a contract? I, you know, that's a good, I don't know what would happen if we don't sign this. You know, we got this from our electricity broker, who is sort of the go-between in between us and Dynagy now. Um, I don't know that. But, but yes, maybe we would have to renegotiate or we would be forced to pull out of the aggregation. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, a piece of aggregation news, sorry, Tom, we're stretching this out a bit. A piece of aggregation news is among the 13 towns, Conway had the highest sign-up rate of people who stayed within the aggregation. They had the lowest rate of people, about 10% of people dropped out of the aggregation and stayed with Eversource. And, and my hope is some of those people will look at the prices that their neighbors are getting for slightly greener electricity than Eversource, a lower price, they might decide to join. I'm amazed at how many people looked at the aggregation and told me this has got to be too good to be true. And it made them nervous to join. And, you know, that, that's, that's the skepticism people have for government today. Uh, it, you, you know, it's, uh, this is a good thing about government. They're not everything, but, you know, the aggregation is a really good program. And uh, I, I, See, I don't think it's the spec skepticism of government. It's the skepticism of the interface between corporations and government. And, um, uh, you know, and, and the, but when, when a highly regulated in, uh, industry like electricity generation, um, uh, you know, it, 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 what, what corporate roles and all that are. So that's where the skepticism comes in. We all tend to think that every source is, you know, does everything perfectly and they don't. And, and generally aggregations, you know, thrive on the fact that they don't get the lowest price. Okay. So, 
So I'm gonna. I would like to make a motion that I sign this 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 um, um, amendment to our pricing agreement that we got from Dynagy. Uh, and I could use a second. So moved. That's a second. Okay. Okay. Uh, whatever. Yeah. So. Okay. And, uh, and and I think we all say aye. Wonderful. And the other piece of new business, and I thought that Jan might be here, but it was to sign a contract with Zobrio for conversion software, conversion of, of the town's payroll software. And Jan wrote a really wonderful note about that, uh, which maybe if we've all read, you know, and this is Jan we're talking about, um, we can ex we can accept it and support that. Tom, do you want to talk about this anymore, or do you have anything to um, add to it? Uh, no, I'm. We we have um, we. This is something that's been in the works for some time, and I think that this is um, sort of the last. We we've had um, this conversion pro process going for at least two years, and uh, my impression is is that this is sort of the last phase of that. Uh, but I don't want to speak too much because Jan really has been the uh, lead on this, and uh, I thought she was going to be here as well. I I, I just sent her a reminder. Um, let me just see if she sent an email. No, I, I don't have any recent communication from her. I, I had thought she was going to be on as well. Um, I would, um, if you have looked at, at the email that she sent, um, I would urge you to take uh, the information from that and, uh, and approve it because, uh, again, this is, this is part of a much longer longer term process uh, and I, I'm not exactly sure whether this is the last piece of it. Uh, I, I'm thinking that it is because it's already been going on for two years. Kind of like the assessors, very long term. They want to make sure that the, the, um, the new system provides the same results that the old system provides. and. Uh, that's that's why these software conversions are a little bit clunky uh, for the town to run is because we're, we're we're running both versions of them at the same time. But that's getting a little bit away from this particular contract. Um, sorry, yeah, I did not have time to review it uh, coming in. So the the big thing that I saw about this, Bob, was that you know that um, this is it, it's. Once FERCOG and all the member towns decide to use this provider, then um, it makes a lot of sense for us to use the same provider for all the reasons that Jan set forth. So that to me really sealed the deal. So I thought she made very compelling arguments. I mean, that this, that, that what we're using now for a payroll company, um, their service and support is kind of unreliable or it's not predictable in terms of what's going to happen down the road and that this system will play well with the other systems that we have in place and especially since the rest of the towns and the FERCOG have adopted it. It seemed like a no-brainer to me. Me too. So I'm going to make a motion right, that we sign this contract. Second. Yes. Okay. So thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Thank and, and I, and I, 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 I do remember now that this is the payroll aspect of this is more or less of an add on and we're already using um, the other updated software. So this, this should be the final piece in uh, in what she's been managing. Great. Items not anticipated in f within 48 hours. Tom, do you have any of these? No. Anybody? Me too. No, not really. Do you have a, a, an update, Tom? Uh, just a couple of items. Um, Carl Vigeland, who has, uh, he was working on the McLeish Stone Studio project and spoke at town meeting regarding uh, their proposal. Is He's having a Zoom meeting Friday, September 4th at 1 p.m. I've posted the Zoom info to the website. I, I don't have it up on the calendar yet, but I'll put it up there as well. 
uh, you'll remember there was some controversy at town meeting about um, what they were going to do and access that Conway residents were going to have to it and things like that. So he's got a presentation up now, Great. or he's he's going to have one. Uh, also, um, we have received a a draft petition from John Heffernan and, and uh, several other residents, many other residents, over 20, um, uh, asking for the select board to one restrict management of town forests to reserves, trails, and invasive species control, and two, rescind any permissions to locate logging landings on town property on Cricket Hill Extension. So the first one has to do with the forest stewardship plan and the second one doesn't, uh, but it's a related topic. Uh, the petition is still in circulation and there is additional text. Uh, John also sent the petition as signed so far to Mary Wigmore as comments on the proposed plan. Uh, I plan to put the forest stewardship plan on the agenda for the next two meetings as the grants deadline extension runs just to the end of the month. So I've also, I've also put that petition on and let John know that I put it on for the 14th of September. Uh, I have received two applications for an assistant. Uh, Susan Fenton of the Personnel Committee will be assisting in the interviews, which I hope can happen next week. And that's it for me. Uh, quick question, Tom. Yeah. Uh, um, so, so, so you're going to add this to the agenda for for next meeting. Uh, the, uh, the, yes. the the petition. Um, yes. One of the things that got talked about a lot and that he brought up that was all news to me was this whole idea of landing sites, um, and 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 Cal's landing sites and whether they abused them. And he wrote a very compelling note about that. And I don't know anything about landing sites. Um, could we get somebody from Cowles or who ever uses these landing sites to come in and talk to us? I'm happy to ask. Uh, uh, it, part of it, Bob, was that was the, the landing site that was put in above his, re not too far from his residence way back, what, 15 years ago when the town was involved with a, a logging operation on the town forest there. And, and, um, that there was a lot of issues with that. It just didn't go as well as everybody had hoped. And um, first of all, it was far more expensive for the town than what the town had, the, the construction of it, the construction of the culvert, the construction of the road to it, whatever, um, that, that made the actual amount that the town received for the logging, uh, like less than half of what so that, it is. That, so that was for our logging. That was for when we right. logged the town for Right. But, yeah. but I mean, that just gives a, a, a flavor that this is a, a, a over 15 year old like issue that was, you know, legitimate. It was legitimate back then. It's still a legitimate concern now. So does Cowell still use that same site, that landing site? I do not know. I do not know that well, I'll ask her. I, I can contact them and ask. I mean, I don't know who it's, if we restrict, if, if we, if we totally restrict that landing site, I don't know who that hurts. You know, I mean, it's easy enough to say let's, let's restrict it, but, but somebody, if somebody, if Cowles was planning on using it and thinks they have permanent access to it or whatever, you know, I, I don't know how to find that out. But. And also, you know, what I, what I tried to tell people in the, in the meeting, um, in the logging meeting too, is that when, when it comes to, if there's a desire to control people's behavior on town land, then, um, you know, a, a, a bylaw is, is the route to go rather than, uh, you know, how, how, how binding upon the police is, is, is a request from the select board to not do something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, and, and that's, and, and there's a good argument for that, that, that the town should be involved in determining what the town uses its forests for. And a bylaw is just another example of that. So, um, I don't know what people think of all that, but I did try to 
when, when that came up in, in that meeting, I, I'd suggest, you know, look, you get, so you get, you write it out, you get some petition, you get some signatures on a petition and, and it gets put on the warrant. Um, and then people can vote it out. So, Jesus. sorry. Yeah. I've, I, I've noted those under uh, concerns of the select board. Great. Great. Yeah. Oh, good idea. Yeah. Uh, and there was another, since we're on concerns of the select board, um, sure, we can be. Uh, there was another one. So in that meeting, um, one of the persons brought up a, a very good concern about the access from uh, of the school students to the forests uh, in light of the the road, the the garage, the, the highway facility construction, and um, the fact that the previous pathways to the forest are no longer usable as a result of that construction. And um, the concern was that there had not yet been a path. Uh, a safe path for the students to get to that forest. And that is a true, that was a true and accurate statement when that was made. And it is a concern. Um, it's something that, that Ron has been talked to and um, uh, but by the principal, by Bruce, um, and uh, by the person that asked that question as well. And so we are assured that it, there will be a pathway created and he does still have a couple of weeks to do it. Uh, so. Uh, but that was that was the one thing that I thought, you know, that was a very good concern that was brought up in that meeting. And it was appropriate to deliver a reminder, I thought. So. Great. Uh, it's related to that also, although if maybe we're going to segue into mail here, but we, we all got a letter from a Conway resident concerned about all of the, you know, 30 or 40 years probably of old trucks and and plows and and highway equipment that has just been left to rust and and this has come up for many years since i've been a selectman and and it would be nice if we could get that cleaned up and and so it, 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 it's not exactly the same issue but it's related to it you know the, the kids have to practically climb over rusty old trucks to find their way from the school back to the forest. And, and, and so this is great if we can get some feeling is, from Ron. But this I'll, I'll, I'll ask Ron about that for I think I think he's aware of all this, you know, and I remember it was brought up with him in, in the discussions regarding approval of that project that that was seen at the time as something that was important that that's got to be cleaned up. And, and that's, I don't that's know when, part, he, that's when he has time to do any of this stuff. Right. And certainly right, he's not it, overflowing an employee. I know. So, but I yeah. Know, but, but yeah. But the, 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 the students do really need access for, to that forest when school yeah. opens. That's something that's really true. And it has to be safe. It, you know, that's, it has to be safe even though trucks might be going up and down all day long. So, but apparently they have created a path that satisfies everybody concerned. It's oh, just good. a matter of him doing it what's necessary to make that happen so okay so how about mail did anybody else get any mail i think we're good announcements so i have a few announcements or at least things that that feel like announcements to me and we don't have much opportunity to say these kinds of things so one of them is so the massachusetts primary is tomorrow and if anybody, you know, by the time, other than you hope, by the time anybody watches this, the primary will probably be over. But uh, it is so important that people vote in this primary. And there are two races in this primary that are national level races. Um, one between Ed Markey and Joe Kennedy, and one between Alex Morris and Richie Neal. These are, these are gigantic high level races um, if you're a Democrat anyway, and, uh, uh, and people really just need to vote, I, you know, how people vote, that's up to them. But I just think getting a good turnout for these races is so important. And, uh, so the, so our polls are open. Our polls are open from 7am to 8pm tomorrow in the town hall. And, uh, I hope people, if you haven't voted already, then now's the, tomorrow is the time to vote. Yes. Hope. Uh, I tried to find out this information uh, earlier and uh, was not able to. So is is it really 
just the um, the candidates that you mentioned, or are we also voting on ballot questions tomorrow, or are we waiting till November for that? No, no ballot questions. These are just Democratic race, a primary and a Republican primary. Um, and I think these two races might be the only races on the election, on the- No, there's, there's more. Race? There's more? There's other races. I, I forget. Yes, uh, other races that do not have national sex appeal. Right, right. Uh, I, I voted a long time ago. So, uh, and, and, and then that once, once this primary is over, and what's interesting, that one of the things nationally is this is one of the last primaries in the country. So people are looking at this primary, especially this primary between national level candidates to see how the country is leaning. And, and uh, I, I, I'm, I'm thrilled that people are looking at these races hard. It's, you know, they're both really important. Um, uh, so, just, oh, just, just so you know, the, um, the election warrant uh, includes uh, senator in Congress, representative in Congress, counselor, uh, that's the governor's counsel uh, that, that appoints judges and things, uh, senator in general court, that's the state senator, representative in general court, state rep, and register of probate. And those are, there are races and there's more than one person running in all of those. Does anyone uh, I, have anything to, uh, to recommend in terms of the best place to go to get the entire warrant? I, I've just, I don't know if it's just me and I'm used to the Amherst scene, but I just have had really hard time finding who's running biographies you know, positions, uh, I just, is there a central place here in Franklin County, like the League of Women Voters that just gives a neutral uh, a summary of what you're voting on? That's a good question. Yeah, you can, you, you can look at the ballot, you can look at, you, can look at, you know, the, the ballot you're gonna vote on if you go to the Secretary of State website. You know, you can you can download the ballot. You can you know see who is running, who you're going to have to make a decision when you walk into the voting booth. Uh, but but for the primary, I don't know of anyone. The League of Women Voters sends something like that out for the November election, but right. I don't know anybody who does that for a primary. And I think the Secretary of State also sends things out to the towns for general elections. I just you know, must there, there's keep missing it. Pamphlet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but for, for general elections, I, I, I don't know about the primary. Okay. I would say talk to me, but you know, but you know, that's kind of what everybody would say. You no. know? Uh, talk, talk uh, Lori, Lori Lucier uh, would be the one who would know the most about that, the town clerk. Of course, she'll be busy with the election tomorrow. <laughs> I suspect Lori will be very hesitant to give you a rundown on Ed Markey or Joe Kennedy or Alex. Morris or Richie Neal. Um, uh, I don't really want anyone's rundown. I can certainly, you know, Google it. But it's more just like a centralized place because I can't tell you how many times I've gotten into the voting booth thinking I was prepared and then there's some question that I didn't anticipate, didn't, and then I don't know how to vote. And, I For feel. the ballot questions, the League of Women Voters always puts out an excellent summary as well as the long form of the ballot question. And usually they're written with a bunch of double negatives and you have to, you know, know. write down your answer to remember exactly how exactly. to write. Exactly. How to vote, yeah. Um, and uh, again, the Secretary of State provides towns with information for general elections as well. But, but check with Lori Lucier uh, because, you know, things may have changed, but that, that's how it uh, has happened. Thank you. you know, there's those, those newsprint bulletin-like things that, that come out. So what that's, do you mean um, by that, Tom? What do you mean, newsprint? You know, they're, they're eight, and a half, eight and a half by 11 newsprint, um, you know, maybe uh, 20 or 24 pages. Okay. Maybe oh, less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So th those come from the Secretary of State, and we, we should have some here. But, but again, Lori's the one to uh, ask about that. 
Do okay. we get them for the primary? They, they sound like what we get for the general election. Yeah, I don't think they do them yes, that, for the primary. Yeah. I'm talking about the general election. Yeah, we okay. do not have any for the primary. Yeah. Right, right. So it another, does, and, go ahead. It just seems like it could be, there's somehow, it just seems like it could be more citizen friendly. I mean, I'm very involved and I'm on the internet pretty much 20 hours a day looking at something and it's i'm finding it difficult to just drill down to the basic questions obviously like most people i'm paying attention to it more this year and in the last few years um, but i'm just finding it very challenging to if i were just somebody who was not really interested but did want to vote i think it would be you have to go to town hall and ask the town clerk and it it's it's not easy to get basic information about about things that's again neutral not biased not not trying to get you to vote for one candidate or another is it just, is it just me or does anyone else experience this to make it easy this year many of our reps and senators are running unopposed uh, and, and, you know rep mcgovern in worcester is running unopposed both in the primary and in the november election so many people run unopposed. So, I, I, I think the um, Secretary of State does a very good job of that for the general election. I mean, I think, yeah, it is incumbent upon people to do a little more research for the primary. Um, and I don't know, maybe that's something to, we can encourage the Secretary of State to do to put out a bulletin earlier, you know? Yeah. But Yeah, he, he just, I'm looking now, he just has the uh, names of people running in the primaries, no, no bios. I think at the national level, people look at the primaries like private clubs. You know, you know, it's sort of like it's with it's it's run by the Democratic or Republican Party or the Green Party. They run their own. They can do it. They can do it any way they want. You know, there's almost no election rules that are enforced. They you can know, cancel it. They can. They can just cancel it. They, you know, they, they can. You like the, the incumbent rules. that much? <laughs> so, so I. So you, you know, nobody ever takes a candidate to court over violation of election laws during the primary. You know, the, the courts don't want to touch it any more than they would want to touch, you know, maybe, you know, a, 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 the private, a, some, any other private club election. So it's just- But I mean, what, I think Hope's concern though d does go to sort of a more national question about whether we should take elections a lot more seriously than we do. And I mean, in terms of, uh, access to vote, access to, re you know, same day registration, the, the national, why isn't an election a national holiday for crying out loud? Um, just all those things, just, you know, there's, the, uh, it's just one of the little nuanced, subtle obstacles to an informed vote is, well, we kind of, you got, you got to, you got to work hard to find out what's going on. Yep. The, the, they want people just to go in there and do straight tickets and, and all that, and the if the more information they present, the more people split tickets at the voting booth. Not in the primary, but in the general, they don't want general. that. Neither party wants that. Okay. Another announcement I wanted to talk about was this new version of the forest plan that's coming out virtually today or tomorrow. We already talked about that. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about is getting a flu vaccination. And so if you remember a year ago, Conway had a flu clinic in October and a flu clinic in November. And it's almost October, you know, which I, I find hard to believe, but you know, you're talking about school starting and it's about to be here. And so Conway is gonna be part of an October 4th flu clinic. It's gonna be, if people tried this, they probably enjoyed it, another drive-through clinic. And it's gonna be held at the Deerfield Garage on October 4th, and the exact times you know, haven't been released yet. And I just think these drive-through clinics are the way to go. You, you drive from station to station, ultimately you just hang your arm out the door, they give you a shot. If you go with somebody, they have somebody on the passenger side, somebody on the driver's side, and you're both getting a shot at the same time. And, uh, and the state, 
pra had us practice these quite a few years ago. Deerfield had a bunch of them. They went really well. And that was the state funding them as new ideas in preparation for a future pandemic when we would need to be doing mass vaccinations. And so here we are, we're doing this again in practice to make sure that when the COVID vaccinations become available, we can do mass vaccination. And, but so I'm thrilled that we're gonna try this again. So in October 4th, you can get a flu clinic. Um, there's gonna be a, what's called a senior flu clinic. So that might mean it's only available to seniors. I'm not sure, but it sort of sounds like it. In the Conway Town Hall on November 6th, I don't have the date, the times for that. That's going to be given by Lisa White, our town nurse. And um, and if there will be some more info coming out in the next version of Conway Currents, you can get the details. And one of the important things for if anybody's watching this at home, um, especially for the October 4th one, they need volunteers. A lot of the people who have done these clinics in the past are consider themselves elderly and they are nervous about doing things. So just like many voting booths in Conway, this wasn't a problem, but in many towns, they're having a hard time staffing their voting booths. And, uh, and, and they're, they're looking for volunteers. And so if anybody is willing to volunteer at one of these flu clinics, you can contact the Board of Health, the Conway Board of Health, especially contact Ver Veronique or uh, Mario Eakin they would love to um, tell you about the training you would get and then have you help you volunteer. So those are my announcements. Any more? No? Great. So last is our next meeting, which is two weeks from now on September 14th. And school will be almost starting then, Phil? The teachers will be back in the building, yes. Um, but and the students will be coming a week or so after that. But uh, this, you know, you, the, about the flu shot, it, the, the governor's order that all, all school students, K through 12, have to be immunized with the year's flu shot during the school year or before the school year. I don't quite know the timing, but I suspect that October 4th uh, uh, clinic might be getting more people than they otherwise would have due to the mandatory nature of the vaccine for for many of the town's residents. Yeah, I forgot about that, but you're exactly right. Uh, they are, uh, Governor Baker mandated that, and there's a lot of controversy over that, and I bet it's gonna go to the courts. And, and a number of people, including our Attorney General, have written briefs on uh, supporting his authority to make that kind of, of a ruling, and I found it really shocking to read Maura Healy quoting Donald Trump in her ruling that Governor Baker has that authority. So not well, often. There are that. medical and uh, religious exemptions. And, you know, and, and Desi is forecasting that the flu, it just in and of itself will be wreaking havoc with the schools um, come later in the fall that because some, there's so much uh, so many of the symptoms between COVID-19 and the common flu are similar that there's, it's going to be prompting many different closures of varying lengths, just, just the flu all by itself. So e even if everybody gets immunized, that's the thing, because I mean, everybody should, but um, in most years, what, 50, 60%, uh, you know, a, an immunization that's 50 or 60% effective against what 50 or 60 percent of all the strains that are out there if they get to that point they're really happy so um you know yeah. it's pretty pretty amazing how many people get the shot and then still get sick because they can't predict the future when they're giving you the shot so i hope yes yeah um I'm, I do want to just put out a word um, of concern, or at least of hope. It sounds like you guys are all very enthusiastic, and I'm not qualified to argue for or against. I'm not a doctor or a scientist, but I am very keen to see that the medical and, and religious exemptions 
for people of conscience for whatever those reasons are. Um, obviously, this is beyond the town level. It'll be decided um, at the governor's office and elsewhere. But whenever I come on these meetings, I'm always talking about people's rights out to, to think differently and to stand on religious principle if they are so moved. And that's an important right. I'm very concerned about um, a medical tyranny being pushed on our population where people won't have the right or the ability, they will have the right, but they will not be able to say, I have, I don't wanna do this for whatever reason. And so just speaking as a member, as a, as a citizen of Conway, I can't imagine I'm the only one. I know it's not a very popular opinion, but there will be people challenging this, um, flu vaccine being mandatory for those reasons. And I'm not interested in getting into a lot of pushback from if, whether I'm right or wrong. Um, whether I choose to get one or not is up to me. And I think it should be up to every individual within their family discussion to uh, get that vaccine or to, to whether it's the flu or the COVID, that this is our bodies are, you know, are, are always going to be our own. And I feel very strongly about that. And I say that knowing that this is a state issue, not a local issue, but it has to be, I think, spoken about. And the local issue is where, where I am, so. You're exactly right. And maybe I'm overly enthusiastic. Uh, that, that, that's fine. Um, no, it, 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 if you're enthusiastic, that's great. And if somebody's completely opposed, we all just have to all live together and, um, and make our own decisions about our own bodies. Okay. And on that note, so our next meeting is going to be Monday, September 14th. And if that's it, let's declare this meeting closed.